let us now apply the Laplace transform to a slightly more complicated initial value problem. First of all, it is a nice example. We go through all the steps. And secondly, this also shows the bottlenecks. What are the easy steps and what are the difficult st steps in this procedure? We look into y double plus y equals the sine of 2t with some initial conditions. We take the Laplace transform on the left and on the right and we know how to compute the Laplace transform of sine 2t. We've seen it before. It's given by uh, 2 over s squared plus 4 because the Laplace transform of sine a t was a over s squared plus a squared. Then onto the left hand side the Laplace transform of I, y double equals s squared y minus s y zero minus y prime zero and the Laplace transform of y is just y of s. So there we go. Till now no problems at all. Then we plug in the uh, initial conditions so the y of zero equals two so we get a minus two s and bring it to the other side the y prime of zero equals one so we get a minus one here bring it to the other side and we have a s squared times y plus one times y gives us a s squared plus one times y of s now we can solve for y of s by dividing by s squared plus one so so far so good this is the easy part. We have found y of s, but now we want to go back. We want to find y of t. And this is usually the hard part. Well, this first term here is not too much of a problem. It will be a sine and cosine, something like that. The second term, though, is a mess. It's 2 over s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 1. So we will have to separate the fraction. So we will concentrate on the second term now first. So the second term can be written as rubbish divided by s squared plus 4 plus some other rubbish divided by s squared plus 1. And this rubbish is a polynomial of one degree lower of what is down. So a s plus b divided by s squared plus 4 and c s plus d divided by s squared plus 1. Then we combine it and put it back into one fraction. So we multiply this first term by s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 1, which gives us this part, and we multiply the second term by s squared plus 4 over s squared plus 4, and that gives us this part, and now we have, again, one fraction. Now we compare this fraction and this fraction. The numerators are now the same, so the denominators also have to be the same. So this 2 over here has to be equal to this mess over here. So what is this mess? If we work out the brackets, we get an a times s cubed plus an a times s. We get a b times s squared plus a b, those four terms. We get a c times s cubed plus a 4 times c, with a d times s squared plus a 4 times d. So those terms. And then we're going to compare powers of s. So what do we have with s cubed? We have an a times s cubed plus a c times s cubed. And nothing on the right hand side, so a plus c equals zero. With s squared we have a b times s squared plus d times s squared, so b plus d equals zero again, we have nothing on the right hand side. With s we have an a times s and a 4c times s, so a plus 4c equals zero, and the constant terms b plus 4d equals two. So there we go. Now we have four linear equations with four unknowns. However, they split into two parts, because here we have only a and c, and here we have only a and c. So a plus c equals 0, so a equals minus c. a plus 4c equals 0, substitute, we get minus 3c equals 0, so c equals 0. And then we also find a equals 0. And from the other equations, we find b equals minus d. Plug it in over here. Then we get uh, um, uh, uh, minus uh, 3d equals uh, 2. Uh, Sorry, 3d equals 2, so d equals 2 over 3, and b equals minus d, so b equals minus 2 over 3. So there we have completed the separation of the fraction. So we find this ugly term equals minus 2 over 3 times 1 over s squared plus 4, uh, plus 3, 3, 2 over 3 times 1 over s squared plus 1.
And now we can transform everything back. So what do we find? Y of S can be written as uh, this first part, uh, two times S over S squared plus one. Then we have a one over S squared plus one. And here we have an other two over three times S squared plus one. So five over three times one over S squared plus one. And we have a, from this part, um, minus one over three times two over S squared plus four. Now we have written all these terms such that they occur in our table and we can transform them back right away. The S of S squared plus one becomes a cosine of T. So we get two times cosine of T. The one over S squared plus one becomes a sine of T. So five over three times sine of T. And the two over S squared plus four becomes a sine two T. So minus one over three times sine two T. So there we have our Y of T. Now this was quite a lengthy procedure, so it is wise to check now, when, when we are done, our initial conditions. So plug in y of 0, we find 2 plus 0 minus 0 equals 2, which is correct. And for y prime, you can do the same. For y prime, we get uh, from the first part 2 times uh, as, uh, minus 2 times sine, which is 0, a plus 5 over 3, a minus 2 over 3, yields 1, which is indeed correct. So here we've nicely checked that our solution indeed satisfies our initial condition. So that's a way to check whether you haven't made any calculation errors.